slowly, mentor, walks over to the fire. Well, my friends, your training is complete. You are not yet true heroes. You have yet to prove yourself. But first, let me tell you of Zargon. Hey y'all, this is James Hudson, and this is Starting Roll, where we sit down with some of the most inspirational people to talk about how board games have changed their lives. Let me introduce you to today's guest, Ivan Van Norman. Hi, James. Hi, Ivan. Hello, everybody. So, Ivan, you're a content creator, and you make board games and RPGs. You do a lot of stuff. Yeah, I live in a weird world where I have kind of one toe in the publishing and mm -hmm. you know business space of role-playing games and board games, but I also do like a lot of you know reviews and live plays, mm -hmm. and I occasionally run a spooky RPG or two. And the game that you brought to feature today, Hero Quest. Old school classic. Yes, I know. Super classic. Mixes two worlds together that you just mentioned. I would I would say that's very accurate. I mean, for me, the reason I loved it is, is that it kind of brought board games and RPGs together in a weird way. Like, I didn't even know what a DM screen was, but they had a version of that that sure. popped out with the board. Yeah, well, how about we go to the table? Let's talk about it and check it out. Yeah, sounds good. So tell us a little bit about how you got started in the industry first. Oh, man. So uh, it was a weird boat. I was in college with my buddies. Mm -hmm. Everyone was in a fraternity except for me. Um, and that was just one of those like, I'm, I'm the you know, lone wolf rogue outsider. <laughs> um, but I heard they were playing D&D, like all the time. Right. Like they had a big group and they were constantly playing. And before I got into role playing games, I was playing miniature war games like 40K okay. and things like that. So we kind of played it and enjoyed it in college, but didn't really care too much about it. And as we got closer to the end of our time at university, mm -hmm. we kind of were like, oh, okay, well, we had a buddy who came up with an RPG concept, and we were at that time, like World War Z and Max Brooks' Zombie Survival Guide were like in the zeitgeist at the moment. Sure. So he had come up with a zombie survival RPG. And we're like, oh, that's super fun. Has anyone done that? Google search, yes. All flesh must be eaten, but they've been out of print for like three years. So we just decided, screw it, we're gonna make a game. This was pre-Kickstarter, pre-anything, so we took out a bank loan through a friend of the family. Yep. And we just- uh, The way you for, did it before Kickstarter. We did it before <laughs> Kickstarter, where we literally all went into massive debt. And then we used that to go to, to Gen Con and we started our publishing company. Now, what was your tagline for that? I remember it was really catchy, it was funny. Your zombie survival plan will fail. Nice. Yeah. Because yeah. you're gonna die. Well, the point is, <laughs> even though, this is how it was, all plans technically fail until they've been tested. And okay. so our our cell was just like, if you want to test your zombie survival plan, this is the game for you. The other big hook was you're you're actually plugging yourself into this world and you're building yeah. stats for yourself. We came right? up with a personality test. It was like a forty question personality test that once you were done, you could play yourself as a character. Yeah, and that was our big hook. Well, I suck. Can I just be a wizard though? Instead <laughs> of fireballs. But that, that was what was so cool about like getting into the fantasy world though, because there's a lot of people who were not given the agency uh -huh. to enjoy fantasy the way they were growing up, you, yeah, was that your well, life in story? Alabama. So like, right. being a nerd wasn't cool, you know, before Big Bang Theory came out or whatever, right? right? So yeah. like, our normalization of nerddom, it's just happened in the last 10 years. I was really in a very fortunate position in my childhood growing up. I had Frazetta posters. My mom had literally a cabinet of comic books filled with like Vampirella and Conan and heavy metal and everything else on the planet. Sure. I grew up in a world in which fantasy was the normal. Sure. And so when my friends came in and saw like iron rot gargoyles <laughs> and like mirrors with demons poking, which are all things I had in my house, okay. they were like, Whoa, who is this weirdo? You know, but they loved it. Just yeah. the way that I loved it. So that obviously lends itself to your game that you wanted to feature today, right. Hero Quest. I saw a giant barbarian with a sword and a bunch of goblins and orcs, and I was like, I want that. So how do you, like, why is this game, like, obviously it ties in, was it one of the catalysts that kind of spun you into board games, or? Well, I, I played this game before I even knew RPGs existed. Okay. And it was one of those where I just realized we were playing a game in which you could tell a story and you got to make the map every round. That was what my middle school brain understood. Yeah. And I had, I had friends who are natural trolls, 
So I was the one who was always trying to be like, I am Zardagon and I am the dark wizard who is going to explain and take you through this dungeonous things. And they'd be the ones who just wanted to make fart and dick jokes the entire time. Right. But even going through two scenarios in the game, it was just fun, man. It was about everyone just having fun the way that they wanted to have fun. So you're saying early on, you still had that DM struggle of like, guys, I spent time making this. <laughs> Play serious. I was like, I had to set up the map and name one of the characters, and then like, we're all, you know, we, and that was the part too, is like the rules weren't super important. We kind of knew the rules, but we totally just went with the, you know, roll with the punches. Right. You know, I did my best, but you'd sometimes you just gotta go in half blind. Right. Which is what we did with your Well, quest. and that's what's great about a game like this too, when you're just, if you're just playing, right? Like you can just put some stuff out there yeah, well, and just make it up as you go. That's what I do with my kids now. It's like I don't even uh, I don't even teach Phoenix the real rules. I teach him a version of the real rules that his four-year-old brain can understand. Like when we play Gloomhaven at home, I set up a tiny Gloomhaven board for him and I let him do movement and attacks and that's it. Right. You know, but I don't right. make him do the cards or initiative orders or any of that stuff because he doesn't care. I mean, that's one of the things I do with my kids, right? We just have a, I'll take bullet point plot line mm -hmm. of a, an adventure that I've made. Right. I give them a set of the seven dice that are essential for RPG dice rolling. Right. Right. They'll draw their own characters. Sometimes Parker makes a chicken finger guy and sometimes Stella just makes Captain Marvel. Don't really care. Yeah. Right. And then we just go on the adventure. Yeah. Let them see what happens. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, when you've played a lot of games, the only thing you really need to understand when you're trying to teach kids is that, you know, there is a random chaos factor and there's consequences to actions. So what do you think it is about board games that have this, the special bonding power? Like, what, what, what makes it different than other mediums? I, you know, I, I came to this conclusion after being one of the members of the generation that dove really deeply into internet gaming, mm -hmm. like when console gaming became huge on the internet. Yep. Mine was all based off perspective, because after doing things like going in 16 match Halo 2 online matches and grinding that for a long time and being so fascinated and obsessed with this idea that I could be playing with someone across the world right now in the same game, yep. I think we all kind of got over that. It generated a need to go back into this personal connection that board games are so good at. So if somebody's watching this, Yeah. Why would you tell them that playing make-believe as an adult, as not an adult. with your kids, right. like we've talked about with our kids, but yeah. as an adult, why is it still important to play make-believe as an adult? Games are important in our lives because playing is how we continue to engage and learn about each other in a safe and wonderful environment. Right. There's simulations for our brain that challenge our mental state, that challenge our social antiquities, that challenge our ability to be able to test ourselves against other people. It's a mental sparring match. Sure. Sometimes it's a collaborative sparring match. Yeah. And this is a safe way to do it and play and have fun and grow as a person. So I would say board games, if I want to sum all that up real quick, <laughs> board games are important and play is still important in the world because it is a way to continually challenge ourselves in a way that allows us to all enjoy each other's company at the same time. Yeah, there, 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 that does happen, right? So we'll spend time together and maybe we don't even really like, I don't ask you about your family or we don't really share a lot of like deep secrets or anything like that. However, we come away from say a two, three hour board game session yeah. feeling very bonded. Yeah, and it's because you learn, you can learn a lot about someone through how they play. Sure. You know, and how they interact in a game. And sometimes you find out there's certain people that you don't want to play board games with. Yeah, it's, it's you know, and the thing is everyone deals with um, stress in different mm -hmm. ways. Everyone deals with being challenged in different ways. And sometimes people just need to know that these are inside of them because they would have never known otherwise. Or they would have never had the ability to put the mirror in front of them. Sure. And again, it's, you know, it's not like you and I are pulling out knives and we're learning how, you know, physically adept we are by having a knife sparring match. <laughs> Dexterity you know. minus one. <laughs> <That's right>. um, <laughs> Whoops. These are these are all things that are relatively low impact as far as like 
you know, risk to bodily harm goes. This right. is, I mean, this is one of the reasons why I just don't get upset about losing games anymore. Right. It's just fun to play. And yes, it's super great to win. It is awesome when you win. <laughs> but it's also perfectly okay to lose because you're still engaging in that challenge. Yeah, I definitely well. think there's there's some people who sit down to a board game and they feel like it's a it's a test of their IQ. Right. Right. And and I, and I would like to say to those those people that that that's one that's one aspect of a board game, right? Sure. There's nothing wrong being proud of having a smart strategy that you you know, execute, navigated and, and execute executed. perfectly. That's great, yeah. but it's only one piece. Yeah, it's only one piece of that big pie. And if you're too focused on any one piece, I think. Right. You know, because at the same time, too, if you're just walking through a game and you don't care if you win or lose, then it's also not fun for everyone either. If you're a passive player right. in the space as well, too. So as with everything, there are extremes. Sure, sure, sure. And games demand that we bring the best to the table, but also demand that we ensure everyone plays with joy and grace. So you know? this is all great. I, I mean, I love it. But what do you feel like is, because this, this is an older game, right? You right. brought in an no. old school goodie. Yep. So what do you feel like the evolution of board games are? Because right now, um, you know, a, a modern day cl classic that's similar to this would be like Gloomhaven. Right. right? right. What's even past that? What's next? More interactivity, I think, lower barrier of entry. People being able to pick up and play, I think is really important. Sure. But then also those people who have gotten past those early, uh, earlier barrier of entry games who have more time, they want things that really are interactive. I, I feel like we're going to get to a hybrid model at this point, you know, where we we still love our video gaming and we like how easy it is to pick up and play sure. and go into it in that low barrier of entry that comes with playing a video game. But we still love this interactivity and this right. personal touch yeah. that board games bring to the table. So. At some point, the future is going to blend the best of both worlds. It know? is. I mean, nobody wants to rip out a 40 page rule book and go, oh, I really love reading this homework yeah. assignment. You and know? even this, it's like, I mean, Gloomhaven is, a, to bring up your Gloomhaven, Gloomhaven is a wonderful game. Sure. And I enjoy appreciating it. I liked it. 50 times more when I found out there was a Gloomhaven app that kept track of all the monsters' initiatives and the rounds yep. and the monster cards. So that's, the, that's, that's what you say, this, the hybrid to facilitate faster and easier gameplay. To yeah. reduce the barrier of entry and get to the parts that we love about board games the most, which is the mental stimulation and the social interaction that comes with playing the games. Well, especially as a publisher, right? Yeah. Like you're when you're making a game, you're trying to figure out how do I help people get to the fun in the fastest way possible? Yeah, and in, and more importantly, and then what's the cost of adding more? You sure. Know, if you want to put more, what are they going to get out of it? So, Ivan, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Where can the viewers follow all your work? So, I'm on all the social medias. Sure. Everywhere as Hydra underscore Lord. Thanks for My having friend. me on. Thanks for coming so, on. So, I know, and I want to play this again. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's just play. Want to have that same experience we talked about with HeroQuest today? A great new alternative is Gloomhaven, a game of tactical combat in a persistent world of shifting motives. Players will take on the role of a wandering adventurer with their own special set of skills and their own reasons for traveling to this dark corner of the world. Players must work together out of necessity to clear out menacing dungeons and forgotten ruins. In the process, they will enhance their abilities with experience and loot, discover new locations to explore and plunder, and expand an ever-branching story fueled by the decisions they make. Check out the link below to grab your copy today and make sure to come on back for new episodes of Starting Roll.